I really want to encourage business owners to get started working on the business today and not to wait. And this is something we run into all the time, so I thought I would just address it. And it's kind of analogous to the people who uh, they want to hire a housekeeper, but they're a little bit embarrassed about how dirty the house is, so they actually clean the house before they let the housekeeper in. And, and that's what we see. It sounds crazy, but that's what we see all the time. And one of the things that we hear is, well, it's, you know, it's not a good time. I mean, maybe there's a better time, or we just need to wait, or can we put this on the back burner for a second? And that's great. I understand where they're coming from. They're overwhelmed. The business owners are overwhelmed by all the different fires and all the different things that, that are coming at them. But I also think it stems from a misunderstanding about exactly what strategic planning and execution is supposed to accomplish inside a business. And I get it because a lot of the businesses, that almost all the businesses that we work with, have never had any pre prior experience with strategic planning and execution. The disciplined process of deciding where we want to go, how are we going to measure progress along the way, what's the bite-sized chunk we should be pursuing this year, what are our 90-day priorities as a team? How do we hold each other accountable? How do we work through issues along the way? Like that's the, that's the process in a nutshell that we teach companies how to execute. And if you've never had any experience with it, there tends to be this mentality or this misconception that I got to clean the house before I can, I can get the work, start doing the work. And that's not the case at all. So just by way of example, let me give you a few of the things that we've heard over the years. And these are all real examples. And, and, and we've heard these more than once. Like these, are, these, these happen over and over and over again. Uh, businesses seem to fall onto uh, into these excuses all the time for why they can't really get started right away. Or we have to work on this issue or that issue before we can really start doing the strategic planning work. So sometimes, let's like pretend like you're right here, right? This is you, you are here, the little dot on the map. Sometimes it's stuff that's already happened. You know, like it's, we've just come off a really busy season. It's season down here in Southwest Florida, or is it season up here in the Northeast? We just, you know, the ground is about to freeze and we're not gonna be able to do anything anyway. So maybe we should wait until then. But right now, you know, it's just everybody's tired and it's, you know, it's gonna be hard to get them motivated, right? Um, or uh, we just hired some new people, they're in some key positions, or we got a lot of training to do, and it's really going to impede our ability to, to work on the business, or uh, business owner has been sick, or a key person has been out for an extended absence because of an illness, or cancer treatments, or death in the family, or something like that. That's, those are all examples of stuff that, that have happened in the past. You get into the future, oh, we've got this software conversion coming up, you know, it's really going to, you know, we need everybody working on that. And it's, you know, it's going to be hard for us to work on the business while we're trying to get this, this piece of software up and get everybody trained on it. Oh, we just hired a, you know, real key position, like a sales manager position. And, you know, I don't know, it's going to be hard to get them involved. They're learning the job. Uh, we're going to change locations. We got this big move coming up. We have a new product line that we're going to start. This vendor came in and we're all excited about it. Something we really need to do to take advantage of, a, of an opportunity in the market. So we need to focus on that. Uh, we got a lot of changes that we need to make. You know, so-and-so is moving to this department and this person's going to be retrained over here. And uh, we're going to promote the business owner's son up into management. And, you know, that's going to take a while. And I don't know if we're going to be able to, you know, work all that out while we're, while we're trying to do planning. Um, the CEO is going on an extended uh, leave of absence. You know, he's going to he's going to uh, bike across the country, or uh, he's he's going to a, a six week executive MBA course. That you know, he's finally got this opportunity, bucket list thing. You know, we really can't do it without the CEO here. Or, uh, you know, we're really anticipating you know a downturn in the economy, and we kind of need to batten down the hatches and you know get everything squared away and. You know, the recession might be coming, and so maybe it's better to, to, to wait until all that dust settles, right? Every one of those, every single one of those we've heard multiple times, not just once, uh, not occasionally. Every single week we run into a business that says, I'd love to get started. I really want us to start making headway or making progress, but, but there's always a but. So I want to I want to address not each one of these individually, I want to address what is it that strategic planning and execution is supposed to do 
that makes all of these excuses irrelevant, right? And there's a great book called The Four Disciplines of Execution. It's somewhere over there on my bookshelf. But they coined this term called the whirlwind. And it's a, it's a fantastic description uh, and concept of what we're up against when we work with businesses to do strategic planning and execution. Uh, the whirlwind is everything that's happening. The whirlwind is customer fires you have to put out. It's the employee issues. It's the scheduling. It's payroll. It's, it's everything that you're getting paid to do as part of your 40 or 50 hour week job description. That's the whirlwind. And we don't get to take a break from that. that ha that's happening all the time. It never stops. Uh, it, it's busy season, it's software conversions, it's new people coming up. All that stuff is whirlwind stuff. And what you have to do is basically admit to yourself and to everybody else that it is, it is permanent. The whirlwind is permanent. The best that we can hope for, what we tell our teams when we go into work with a leadership team, the best we can hope for is that we're going to get two to three hours of your time per week outside of whatever meeting we're in, two to three hours of your time per week when you're going to shut your door and you're going to go to work on whatever the big rock priority is that you've identified for that 90 days. For 13 weeks, we're going to try to focus your effort and attention on some big priority that's directly related to our strategic plan, the one that we built at the beginning of the year, the one that we set goals around, the one that we've committed resources to, the one that you've hired us to help you execute. What, that's what we're looking for is two to three hours a week. All the other time, it's whirlwind. We, and we, we don't fight it. We don't have the luxury of having people who get to work on the strategic plan for 40 hours a week. Not in the size of businesses we work with. We don't work with billion dollar companies that have a C-suite and there's a director of strategic planning. That's not the world we live in, small business. The second thing is that you gotta commit to the team. When we hear these things, we're typically talking to one or two people in the organization. The team isn't telling us this. It's the business owner that's you know kind of got their foot wedged up against the door telling the housekeeper, not yet, not yet, not yet. But you got to let go. These two are kind of tied together. You got to let go and let your team start doing this stuff. And it's not that you're delegating this stuff to your team. It's that all of this stuff, all of this stuff has been excuses we've heard why you can't do why we can't start strategic planning. And all of this stuff have been strategic priorities for clients who let the housekeeper in and we just got started. Right? And here's the biggest difference. The, the businesses that have their foot on the door and won't let the housekeeper in, that just want to get through this stuff before we really start working on the business, this is what their growth looks like. Right? I mean, it just plateaus. Like there might be a little bit of growth, but for, you know, the thing is, like these excuses, they go back a long ways. And these excuses, they will keep going forward forever. Like you'll never run out of reasons not to get started. So these businesses, there was a time when they grew and they've just kind of flattened out because they've bought into the idea that the whirlwind is my new life and I'm never going to be able to escape it. Or they're living under this fantasy that one day they will be able to escape it. And when they're able to escape it, that's when the business will start growing again. And I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. The businesses that say we are going to get started and this software conversion is a strategic priority, and we're going to let the team manage this, and we're gonna hold the team accountable for progress, and we're gonna build milestones in, we're gonna make this actionable, and we're gonna hold people responsible for it every week, and we're gonna get them to make their big rock priorities about the software conversion. We're gonna leverage that two to three hours a week of closed door time on the software conversion, or on bringing in the new sales manager, or later on the building move, or later the new product line, or later org chart changes. If they make these strategic priorities and they weave them into the fabric of the strategic plan and then execute against it, guess what? Those businesses grow. And it's not rocket science. It really isn't. If you're willing to let your team in on the game, you guys can win it together. What you have to do is start measuring actual performance. The person who's got their foot on the door and is not letting the housekeeper in, 
is using all of these things as reasons why the status quo is the result that we have right now. When you commit to the team, when you get your team involved and, and engaged in building and executing the plan, you have to start measuring their actual performance because they're not you. They, you, you. You don't know whether they're making progress unless they're measuring performance. If you've got your foot on the door, you think you're making progress, you think I'm getting one step closer, I'm getting one step closer, I'm getting, oh, I'm ready to let the house keep rent. Oh no, no, we got a new, we got a new thing here that we got to clean up before we let the house keep rent. And so you constantly have this ticking scoreboard in your head about the progress that you're making. But when you commit to the team, you have to start measuring the team's actual performance, which requires you to get a lot more smart about the things that you're measuring and the things you're holding people accountable to. And they will perform. Your team will, will knock it out of the park. But you got to let the housekeeper in to start, so that the housekeeper can start telling them, okay, this is an area we have to clean up. This is an area we have to clean up. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? So my encouragement to you is to just let go and start working on the business today. These things are all fantastic strategic priorities that will drive the business forward and allow you, these will be the things that enable you to grow. But if they con continue to be reasons why you can't work on the business because you have to put these things out, then if you're not working on the business, the business isn't going to grow.